falls. At four, tornadoes smash through Florida, blasting apart homes and taking a deadly toll. A live report from the devastation. I'm John Belaris. The same storm system that created havoc in Florida is now moving up the coast as a nor'easter. I'll have the very latest with the exclusive Earthwatch forecast. I'm Larry Menti, also ahead, a popular dance teacher found murdered in her suburban dance studio. We will have a live report with the latest details. I'm Vi Sikahama, the best male tennis player in the world is in Philadelphia. We'll be talking with Pete Sampras. Plus, how to be house smart and not get ripped off when remodeling your home. News 10 first at 4 starts right now. Philadelphia's NBC 10. Serving Pennsylvania. New Jersey. And Delaware. Now live. This is News 10 first at 4. I was in the kitchen one minute. Next thing you know, the whole house just blew away. Shock and disbelief as killer tornadoes tear through Florida. Good afternoon. I'm Renee Chenault. And I'm Larry Menti. Our top story on News 10 First at 4, tornado terror in Florida. At least 33 people are dead, 10 missing. After El Nino, driven twisters rip through the Orlando area and other parts of Florida. News 10 national correspondent Tim McNichols is live in St. Cloud, Florida, with the very latest live from the scene. Tom. Residents here at Morningside Trailer Park in Osceola County are trying to clean up a major mess from deadly tornadoes. Take a look over my shoulder. This is the swath of this path of destruction this tornado left. This tr the tornado bounced across the county, hitting homes indiscriminately, choosing none. There was a home there. Two people were killed. This home was spared. Here at this site alone, 10 people are confirmed dead, and they are still searching for two others. And this is not the only spot that was hit by these deadly tornadoes. Clearly heavy damage here. Emergency crews shuttle hundreds of injured residents to nearby hospitals. It was early morning when one tornado bounced across Osceola County and right through Ponderosa Mobile Home. This is um, pure, total devastation. You can't get no worse than this. And now we're not going to be able to get very much further in there at all. Dead were found high in trees and near roads, thrown hundreds of yards. Across town, shopping centers were leveled. Homes looked like piles of matchsticks, and semi-trucks were tossed like matchbox cars. I had four semi-trailers, and uh, it picked one of them up, a 45-footer, and just deposited it next door. I was in the kitchen one minute, and next thing you know, the whole house just blew away. As the search for more bodies and survivors continues, even seasoned rescuers are stunned. The closest I can compare this to is Hurricane Andrew when our teams went down there to assist those folks. This is by far the uh, more stained since then, by far. Now we are back out live. As you can see, members of the Florida National Guard have been called in to secure this area. This is the first time this has happened in this area since Hurricane Andrew back in 1999. And sadly enough, we're here to tell you that the death toll has risen once again. We are up above 40 now, 10 at this site. 40 more to moon and about two dozen still missing. In St. Cloud for NBC News, I'm Tom McNicholas. Now back to you. Well, Tom, you've mentioned St. Andrews a couple of times, and as you know, now the death rate is higher than it was at St. Andrews. There's no doubt this will be declared a federal disaster area, but before that money comes, what is being done for the people there? The Red Cross has come in here. Actually, we haven't reached the death part of, of, Andrew, of Hurricane Andrew. That was 52, I believe. We are approaching that, and there's a strong possibility we may be there. But why we keep referencing Hurricane Andrew is because many of these rescue crews here in Osceola County in Central Florida were there in, Flo in Miami. They're comparing this right on to Hurricane Andrew. They say they've seen nothing like this, and they're stunned. But the Red Cross is here. The National Guard is here. And they are all trying to do whatever they can and try to find these other people that are still missing. In St. Cloud, I'm Tom McNicholas. Back to you. So I imagine people that want to help in this area could just contribute to the Red Cross at this point. Absolutely. That might be the best way to do it right now. All right. Thank you very much, Tom. Now the powerful storm system that brought those tornadoes to Florida has become yet another nor'easter for our area. News 10 and King of Prussia this afternoon, where rain is falling as the storm continues to develop. And though not as severe as the one that ripped through the south overnight, the system is expected to bring heavy rain and strong gusty winds to our area. News 10 meteorologist John Belaris is in the Weather Center with the very latest. John. Yeah, Renee, it's definitely El Nino driven time and time again. They develop off the Pacific coast. They get driven into the Gulf of Mexico. They 
rake right across uh, Florida and then begin to move up the coast. And yet, in another series of El Nino Nor'easters, this is the very latest one. Let's check out the radar. Wind-driven rains for tonight. The heaviest rain just about moving in now. It's going to be wind-swept. The rain will continue between now and the heaviest rain from now until midnight. Now, there is a possibility that far to the north and west that the rain may actually change over to some uh, wet snow. We're not anticipating accumulating snow just to the north and west, but as you move up into the Poconos, you may see the rain changing to heavy snow, and I'll give you more details on that and uh, what it means to the coast as well in just a little bit. Renee and Larry? Okay, thank you, John. Stay here on News 10 for updates on this new nor'easter hitting the Delaware Valley. Well, you saw it here live for the first time, a sign from the White House that the showdown with Saddam is easing. President Clinton spoke just a few minutes ago about the agreement between the United Nations and Iraq. I hope today's agreement will prove to be the step forward we have been looking for. But the proof is in the testing. The United States remains resolved and ready to secure, by whatever means necessary, Iraq's full compliance with its commitment to destroy its weapons of mass destruction. The deal was brokered by UN Secretary General Kofi Annan. Annan is on his way back to Iraq right now. He made a brief stop in Jordan today. Annan is expected to present the agreement to the UN Security Council tomorrow. The deal calls for weapons inspections at all Iraqi sites. And we will have a live update from Washington and the very latest on the showdown with Saddam coming up in a few minutes on News 10, first at four. Police in Montgomery County are looking for a killer after the body of a dance teacher was found in her King of Prussia studio. Investigators say Joan DeMarco was beaten to death. News 10's Sarah Schulte is live in King of Prussia with the very latest on this investigation. What can you tell us, Sarah? Well, Renee, police do not know who killed Joan DeMarco or what kind of weapon was used, but police do believe that she was a victim of a burglary. Marquee security was not about to let anyone through its luxury apartment complex today, but over the weekend, someone did get through. Someone who killed Joan DeMarco. Police say the 66-year-old ballroom dance instructor was found dead inside her ground floor dance studio just after noon on Sunday. Mrs. DeMarco died of blunt trauma to the head, and we have reason to believe that she interrupted a burglary in progress. DeMarco lived on the third floor of this building, and for the past few years, she ran a ballroom dance studio on the ground floor. DeMarco worked two jobs. In the morning, she worked at a jewelry store at King of Prussia Mall. In the afternoon, she taught dance lessons. Her jewelry store co-workers knew something was wrong when she didn't show up at work yesterday morning. We believe she was on her way to her part-time job. Why she stopped at the dance studio at that time is unknown. Co-workers and friends describe DeMarco as outgoing, funny, and always well-dressed. They also say that recently DeMarco expressed fears, considering her studio had been hit twice by burglars before. Other instructors say DeMarco was very well-known in the ballroom dance industry. She was always a very vivacious, lovely gal. I mean, very uh, positive, you know, and uh, just a lot of fun to be with. DeMarco is survived by a daughter who lives out of town, and at this point, police do not have any suspects. Live in King of Prussia, I'm Sarah Schulte, News 10. Sarah, given the fact that there, it looks like there's a security gate or right b behind you, mm -hmm. um, are, have they been able to, to provide any information in terms of who could have gotten in unannounced or... Well, there is very tight security here. Matter of fact, we talked to a lot of neighbors who live here, and they have a hard time believing that it was somebody from the outside because they check everybody's license plates when they go through there, plus there's a security code. We asked police about that, and they couldn't at this point tell if it was somebody from the outside or inside, but definitely there is tight security here. All right, thanks for your report, Sarah. In Delaware County, a smoke detector may have saved the lives of four people as fire just destroyed their home. Chopper 10's gyro cam over the scene in Yaden. The blaze broke out in the 900 block of Duncan Avenue at around 8 o'clock this morning. Firefighters had to get up on the roof to battle the flames which destroyed one home and badly damaged another. Fortunately, as I said, everyone escaped unharmed. The cause of the fire is now under investigation. Let's check in on area traffic as the afternoon rush gets going. That'd be Mark Davies live at the News 10 Metro Traffic Center. How's the weather uh, affecting traffic, Mark? Well, it's uh, certainly not as bad as it was Friday. A little rainy and a little uh, intermittent wiper kind of an afternoon. Most of the major roads are doing okay. Let's look at the map of 202 in King of Prussia. A bit of a problem here. Jam traffic. <laughs>
This edition of Weatherscope is sponsored by Fancy Feast Gourmet Cat Food. Good taste is easy to recognize. This is Weatherscope. Floridians assess the aftermath from the deadliest tornado outbreak in state history. 38 people are dead, and damage estimates continue to rise. In California, the assault of the El Nino-driven storms continues. Dangerous floodwaters and devastating mudslides are expected. Good afternoon. Welcome to Weatherscope. I'm Bob Stokes. We begin this edition focusing on the storm moving in off the Pacific. For details, we go to Lisa Moser in the Forecast Center. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. We're looking at a very wet situation out towards uh, the California area, and flash flood warnings as a result have been posted uh, at this hour. Let's take a look. We have lots of advisories and uh, warnings to tell you about. We're looking at a gale storm, uh, a gale warning from uh, the Point St. George, California area down to Pigeon Point. Uh, we are looking at some of the wind gusts at this hour around 30 to 40 miles per hour. We also have heavy surf advisories for all of the coastal areas of California. And I tell you, the water has been really adding up. We're talking about maybe three to four inches easily in some of the vicinity uh, from San Francisco to Los Angeles. And on that note, let's take a look at a dramatic rescue for the Highland Park vicinity. California today, uh, we are looking at the Los Angeles fire, fire, firefighters uh, airlifted a man and his two dogs to safety after they became surrounded by rushing water in the area. Arroyo Sayo Wash. Now this is heavy rain that moved into the area during the late morning hours. Uh, the man and his two dogs were unharmed. So a big uh, attaboy and a couple of uh, way to go, you guys. Uh, Tom Moore joins us here at the Forecast Center. Now Tom, I know you've been watching the scenario on the east as well as the west. <laughs> Uh, a lot to keep up with, but uh, at this time I do want to let folks know that a flash flood warning was posted this hour for not only uh, the eastern Ventura County area, but also down around the Santa Monica area and Los Angeles County. Lots of water with this system. Right, and the rain continues to come down at a tremendous pace. It's uh, heavy rain, blinding rain in parts of Southern California, and it looks like this is going to be a potent storm. Well, let's take a look at the regional radar. You'll notice that a line of dark moisture coming in. This is going to mean some mountain snow, and we do have some winter storm warnings posted for uh, almost all of the Sierra mountainous terrain. Right. Uh, good news for San Francisco is that uh, the rain has tapered off to showers there. But a lot of rain in the Central Valley. Fresno has heavy rain right now, and it's coming in for the Sierra Nevada. They could have a foot and a half to two feet of snow. And even at Bishop, this place is uh, not much more than 4,000 feet high. Temperature there is 32 degrees, so even in the high plateaus, uh, we're going to see some snow out of this storm, but the brunt of this storm will be farther south. Okay, and talking about the, the uh, brunt of the storm, because you do, uh, you are telling us a little bit more about those upper air dynamics a little bit later on this afternoon as some, a pocket of colder air comes in. What's that going to mean? Well, we have a front coming on shore, but behind it, at the surface and in the upper atmosphere, another area of low pressure, and there's a lot of cold air aloft, way below zero. And that comes in over Southern California where you have a warmer environment at the surface and it creates instability. Warm air aloft, air rises, forms clouds and thunderstorms. So even behind this front, we're going to have a lot of lifting in the atmosphere and that could produce hail and even uh, some small tornadoes. That would not be out of the question with this particular storm. Okay, we take a look at the satellite imagery, Tom, and we can see that disturbance associated with the uh, colder pocket also aloft. Right, you have uh, one low here and then there's our front, but in the upper atmosphere, there's like a ball of energy, cold air aloft, and this is what's rotating toward Southern California. And when it comes in this evening, we could have quite a bit of severe weather on top of all the heavy rain and, and gusty winds and flooding. So this is going to uh, pack a punch and this storm is going to uh, affect most of the country before all is said and done as well. Well, it really sounds pretty threatening. Looking a little bit further upstream, Tom, are we going, going to get much of a break here? Yes, Lisa, it looks like there's going to be a little bit of a break between this, a little bit of a ridging in the atmosphere ahead of the next storm, and then eventually later in the week, this storm will come on in, but probably not dive as far south as the one that we see right now. So this is a nasty scenario that we're currently looking at. We're talking about flooding problems for the Los Angeles area right now. It's definitely a snowmaker for the Sierra mountainous terrain, and you're saying that this storm will probably be affecting the rest of the country as a winter storm maker. Right, one more thing. In Southern California, the snow levels, are 
the level which the snow fell down to around 4,000 feet. So there's going to be snow in the higher elevations right around Los Angeles, too. Okay, so Los Angeles will try and get through tonight. Uh, we certainly have the problem of the possibility of some flooding uh, as well as mudslides. Right. Okay, well, thank you. Tom Moore, a senior meteorologist here at the Forecast Center, staying on top of the situation to the east as well as the west. We have more details at this time uh, towards the east with uh, Bob Stokes in the Forecast Center, and you can always check out weather.com for all the details on both the east and the west coast. Bob? Thanks a lot, Lisa. Well, deadly tornadoes ripped through the state of Florida last night. This afternoon, the same storm system barrels up the eastern seaboard. While the storm has moved out of Florida, residents will be feeling its impact for some time. Now, these are scenes from central Florida where tornadoes tore a swath of destruction across Osceola, Seminole, Orange, and Volusia counties last night. As you can see, the damage is massive. At least 38 people were killed. That's an updated number. Dozens are missing and 55 unaccounted for. Hundreds of homes and businesses were destroyed. The state's biggest tourist attractions, Disney World, Universal Studios, and SeaWorld, were spared. That's some good news out of all this. There anymore, but uh, this is the one of the destructive elements, this frontal system that moved through Florida, but you can see the wet weather associated with it. You can just see the, the counterclockwise flow here, and that's what's pumping in the uh, mid-Atlantic moisture off of the uh, Atlantic, and there's the low, and it's uh, been strengthening throughout the day. At least the winds have been strengthening along the coastline, and at times of high tide, the waters are going to run a few feet above the average for a high tide, which, is, which of course is high enough anyway. There's a look at the snows coming down, and we have a wind advisory just issued not long ago for the tri-state area. That includes Queens, getting into Brooklyn, the Manhattan area, southern Connecticut. So you need to be careful because later tonight winds are going to be gusting to 40 miles per hour because of this gradient wind. These isobars uh, are indicative of strong winds coming in from the east to northeast. And also we have winter storm warnings issued for several counties in the south central and southeastern part in this general area, the Catskills area of uh, New York, where some significant wet snows could come down. You can already see it in uh, the Appalachians. It's going to head to the Poconos, the Catskills, and eventually the uh, Berkshires could see six inches of heavy wet snow in even the northwestern suburbs of Boston. There's a look at an area of heavy rainfall coming down in central New Jersey, getting into the Philadelphia area. What a mess it's been in Washington, D.C. today uh, with heavy rain, but that's, uh, you can see a clearing some uh, rays of hope here coming up from the south of Philadelphia and New York. What a mess it is at this hour. So if you just have a loved one just getting off work, just know that if they've got to drive over the George Washington Bridge or over the Brooklyn Bridge, it may be a little late coming home. Merrimack River, Massachusetts, down to Ocracoke Inlet, uh, North Carolina. We do have a uh, gale warning in effect from the 39 to 54 mile per hour winds and also a coastal flood watch in effect around Long Island, getting uh, across a good chunk of the coast of uh, New Jersey, at least down to Little Egg Inlet, New Jersey, and a heavy surf advisory in effect for these locales you see outlined in yellow. Yes, significant snows possible, 6 to 12 inches in these areas of gray, including the Poconos here, so the ski resorts uh, will like it, but travelers, beware. 41 in New York now, 38 in Boston, so many locales above the freezing point here. Uh, 66 in Little Rock, and you can see out west to 55 in uh, San Francisco.